Oi. Oh, we get Tristana? Really? We get Tristana? Okay, we'll, we'll take Tristana. <laughs> They'll take it for free, and uh, I wonder if they're gonna go for top lane, maybe grab that Gnar. That's what they're hovering right now, and honestly, it really doesn't show too much of what they want to do, because Gnar can kind of fall back into what they had before, even though, you know, LGD weren't able to make it work so well themselves. It's something that can facilitate more of that tank role. Yeah, it's just an incredibly safe pick, and Ooh. neither of these teams really play around their top laners. Like, these are both bottom side focused teams, so what they play around the top side usually doesn't impact the game so much. They're willing to let this NAR just be countered because, you know, honestly, both of these teams trend more towards late game team fights anyway. So they, they don't really mind uh, with Cult on something like a Jace. In fact, I think it's a bit of a detriment for LGD to put uh, Cult on Jace because um, from what we've seen of their style, they haven't been able to pull early games smoothly. Now, granted, this is a much easier opponent in OMG. So far, they've only won two series, so maybe they can make it work against the bottom side of the league. It's funny, though, seeing the second part of the ban, since no supports were taken on either side. Galio banned away, even though Ooming does play that a lot mid lane, it has played that the most. This split, it is still something that can get flexed into the bot lane. Same with Set. I'm wondering if we're just going to see a bunch of support bans. Uh, we should be seeing Zoe out of OMG. Uh, I think LGD is... Well, Zoe's already banned. Oh, Zoe already banned. Oh, yeah, they actually banned that themselves. Uh, never mind. Uh, yep. This would have been a good composition with Zoe for LGD. Early aggression, you got the double pull composition, but of course, that is no longer on the board. And LGD have to look for a mid laner and a support right here. I feel like they are just going to give last pick over towards uh, Uniboy, allow him to get lane priority to Rome. So we should be in the support, seeing the support here. It most likely will be Leona ban. I feel like Leona is the one that you want to target out most. Nautilus is... Uh, Nautilus is also decent. Oh. But the Cassiopeia is really interesting. I'm not... I don't even think that they've played Cassiopeia. Uh, let me check the... I think Uniboy's played one game of it. Uh, no, no, no. They... Uh, wow, that's even weirder. OMG are the ones who have played it. And so since they're the ones who banned it away, Leona is the option on the other side to be able to pair up with Kramer. Yeah, Leona plus uh, Kai'Sa is that go-to kill lane. It has the most burst damage compared to even the Nautilus. You you get a lot of uh, sun... Uh, it's not called sunshine. I think it's like oh, sunlight. Sunlight stacks with the Q. It can actually proc multiple sunlight stacks with just the Akathian rain. So that kill combination is absolutely deadly. OMG are going for a bit of a pick. We have seen a lot of Ra Rakan plus Onslaught of Shadows. That is probably your premier engage composition. And now they have to pick a blind mid laner. The interesting thing about... Yeah, this rise is something that has been rising in priority, especially with the Everfrost buffs on 11.4. So we could just see that come out, but it's not a usual champion. This is something that I feel like is really player dependent. You can just go into pick and roam, but it usually requires a good early game for rise to be effective. We'll see how that one goes. And now it's Uniboy's turn to answer. Probably just a normal control mage. They do need a bit of AP damage here. Well, see, It'll I was wondering bigger. Victor or Twisted Fate, something that might be able to roam a bit more around the map that might give LGD that pressure topside that they kind of need to when you have Jace lane. This feels like the composition that they wanted last time where they were able to play around the topside that would work a bit more if they did that. But I'm curious to see if they're going to be able to, especially when you have this Victor trying to just wave clear against a Ryze, who is going to do the same, and it's going to be about who neutralizes who first. Uh, it's an interesting lane for these two. The thing about both of these champions is that they actually snowball really well. It's unexpected, but um, for Victor, he doesn't get good wave cure until he gets 100 fragments and is able to evolve his E. And on the other side for Rise, his early game is usually pretty slow. Um, but if he gets an early kill, then he can actually wave push against most uh, mid lane control mages. So I, I do expect this game to be very heavily um, mid jungle dependent, even though it might not really look like it, given the picks. So um, w w what I think is going to be the most important thing here is about the jungle movements for the early and first rotations. I do expect us to see some cheesy level 3-4 ganks into the mid lane and try to swing it one way or the other. And so that's what I was wondering. Looking at the composition drafted by each side, it seems like 
OMG once again have more elements for a team fight front to back composition while LGD jumping into game two. They're going back to what they tried in game one, trying to see if they can have a bit more of a snowball potential. Yeah, this is a very strong skirmishing comp if you get it to go. Because um, Kaisa, if she gets gold, she can assassinate people. Victor is also a surprisingly strong skirmishing champion if he gets going and he gets extra fragment stacks. You can get the Siphon Power evolved a lot sooner. And we are going to see the level 1 from LGD going straight in. And this is the reason you often don't see Rakan into Leona. Mostly because Leona Zenith Blade overrides that grand entrance if you're able to read that play. True, it's uh... It's a lane where uh, level 6, it definitely doesn't feel that good for Rakan. Early levels, though, it, it's still okay. You, you can actually beat the uh, beat the Leona out with your range auto attacks. It hurts a lot. We are going to see an early ward coming in from OMG. I like this warding position. It's basically keeping an eye on the Raptors and trying to protect their top lane in new from getting just uh, ganked early on. Man, it feels like OMG have the read on LGD so often right now. Being able to get that ward, knowing that it's there, and taking away what LGD wanted to do, which is trying to control this early game, being able to have that level 3 cheesy gank into the mid lane to be able to unlock that mid laner and utilize that a bit more. Yeah, it, that ward is actually pretty important because it could potentially spot out Quay when he has the red buff. Uh, what we are looking at potentially is the level 3 gank with bear stance coming in from Quay. This is pretty standard as well from the Jace. Level 1, you hide in a brush, you, you punish yeah. Mew as much as possible. And we have definitely seen this happen. And Mew has to be careful because Colt is uh, pretty damn close to, uh, to, to level 2. And he's just going to be sitting damn here for a very long time. Pretty much owns this top lane. It is the nature of the Nar Jace lane. You don't ever really want to step up. Look at how much damage that new took, but he's actually getting a lot back on Colt, who's cutting back in the minions, trying to get that level two flash. Oh, but first blood before even having level two, didn't even need it. Yeah, he actually overstayed for the W, and I love the way Colt played that out. With the W, you get auto attacks that are max attack speed, able to orb walk very fluently, and just get the first kill. So. I'm a little bit surprised about how easy that was for uh, LGD to actually get. You don't expect that. Most of the times, the NAR will just stay behind the minion wave, sack the first two waves. But New tried to chase his advantage a little bit too far. Colt with the cooldowns up, turns around and just kills him. Now you have a lane, lane, uh, lead, a lane that you have to worry about in the top lane where Colt, sure, he doesn't have flash. It could be a target for Aki to be able to try to get at least something back for the team. But it's the Jace lane against Nar. He's going to continue to be able to win out, even if you're able to get successive ganks on him. I do want to point out what Uming did right there. It was really smart. Uniboy is freezing the way, and he's very afraid of a level 3 gank just coming in from the Udyr. Udyr doesn't always have to gank level 4. He can gank you level 3. But what Uming did was he actually left the lane completely. <laughs> he actually just <laughs> went and waited until Hecarim showed up on the left side of his jungle before he came back into the lane. So a, a really smart play right there, just avoiding the potential for Quay to get that early gank onto him and just prevent the snowball. As we mentioned, I feel like this is actually a lot more volatile lane than people expect out of the uh, out of the mid lane. And now LGD are going on to top. Hecarim's on the wrong side of the map and Mew doesn't have a flash. No, he doesn't, but he is reading this play pretty well. Backing <laughs> off pretty far. I wonder if he's going to step up and... No, Quay does not cancel the recall, opting instead to just go through with it, saying I've committed too much time as is. I got to get to the spot lane since we're seeing that Kramer and Chance are not having the easiest time into Eric and Cold. And that's one thing I want to talk about are the summoner spells that they've taken for this Tristana and Rakan lane. Going for Cleanse, Heal. This is optimum safety in this bot lane to keep Eric as safe as humanly possible. Yeah, this is... Pretty surprising to see, honestly. Uh, it, Tristana has a lot of buffering abilities that can get away from uh, from Leona. You can buffer the Solar Flare, the Zenith Blade, the sh sh uh, Shield of Daybreak. So you can get away from everything, but they're still trying to play super safe. And now Aki might be finding a comeback kill onto Cult. Well, let's see right now. As Cult does not have Flash, wants to get a little bit of damage back on Aki, but of course it is still Hecarim getting a lot of damage back, even with the Shock Blast. We knew that Aki was going to get that kill. 
Yeah, not even with the pink ward is Colt able to escape there. Saw the pony rushing in, and with uh, the ghost, just a very easy kill down. Colt also doesn't have the teleport here, so he will be losing the entire wave unless Quay shows up and tries to hold it for him. I kind of expect to see Quay try to help out, though it isn't a cannon minion wave, so it's not necessarily as important. But it is going to be a bit of a bummer for that Jace Nar lane, where he was bullying him around pretty well, working on trying to stack up that call, get that gold lead to be able to be more powerful in the mid game. Quay does eat up a little bit of it just to be able to make sure that they keep gold in the pockets of LGD. True, and uh, he is a level behind here uh, uh, be uh, against Aki. And this is something we, we see a lot in patch 11.4, but leeching from the lanes is an incredibly useful skill. Now with experience across the board in your own jungle being denied by the patch, the ability to get farm lane is super important to hit level 6 and get your ultimates early. It's, it's really a skill these days to know when you can pick up farm from your top lane without putting them behind. <laughs> As Quay still sitting on level 5, should be able to get level 6 off that Scuttlecrab new. <laughs> he is booking it from that lane. Not even trying. Ooh. Bot lane, though. Good entrance to be able to get a lot of damage on Kramer underneath the dirt, but Cold had to use the heal to be able to survive that turret. A lot of damage came in from that alone. Still a really great trade from the bottom side, just catching out Kramer uh, without his support. So that's going to be an interesting play. In the meantime, no, Aki and Quay are getting help on this Drake. Yeah, but who's going to be picked? This is Ooming, who gets jumped on, tried to kite back, has no exit. They get the dragon stolen away by Quay, but it does seem that Ooming will be early, barely be able to survive. Uh, a decent idea, but their members weren't actually rotated into position. They were thinking that they could start that play with Kramer being chunked low, but the problem is their bottom lane wasn't actually in place to help. Their bottom lane was stuck in lane and uh, what was technically a priority situation, they didn't get to make use of. So the 2v2 coming in with LGD, just able to get the uh, the creep gank off. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's them that are the ones that are able to steal it away from OMG. It seemed like OMG might have actually been able to hopefully just smite and dash to get out of there. Now, not having that. They lost out a bit on the spot lane too with Holden Eric being chunked away by Kramer and Chance. Quay showing up saying, hey, I'll help shove out this wave a little bit so that possibly get even more control over the bottom lane. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, the, the great thing about shoving against a Tristana is the Tristana can't actually hold the wave. So you don't have to be afraid about a great CS difference uh, appearing from that lane. Um, and what I want to see out of LGD now is trying to get this bottom lane roaming. I, I feel like it's actually advantageous if you can find a pick onto mid lane and just chunk down the mid lane as soon as possible. Like, that is actually a good play given the way that LGD's comp is structured. They want to find picks across the map. They have a winning top lane. So if they can make sure that Ooming is constantly picked in, I would like to see some more roams from Chance and Kramer. And uh, especially after this back when they should be looking at uh, Kramer being very close to the Q Evolve to pull that off. Seems like now that you have the junglers on the top half of the map, you already see that Eric and Cold making a beeline to try to help out with that Rift Herald take. Chance too, trying to head straight up to the top lane. We're probably going to have all five members of both teams in the top lane. It's going to be super close from both teams, and just judging by the uh, the items and summoners right now, uh, I do give a bit of an advantage to LGD. They do have that extra flash on the mid lane, so a very strong summoner That's presence fine. here, but Eric is going in. Trying to see the damage they can get on the Uniboy, but it's going to be OMG trying to escape. Barely alive Eric is, but the laser pointer takes him oh. down. I don't know who was able to get the smite kill on to the Rift Herald, though. It might have been OMG who are scattered away and not able to secure themselves the objective. Well, new about to go mega, but Quay flashing in, wanting to be able to get in range to be able to get the bear sand stun and kill. The great play from Quay, knowing that he could make that distance before the Mega Nar came out from new, even got a flash from the Nar. And that's just a huge win on the side of LGD. I'm actually a little bit surprised that OMG was willing to, to index into that. I, I much more expected them to leave Eric in the bottom lane, as they have done before, and just try to tempo trade with the Tristana. But instead, they all in onto that fight. And as we were talking about, uh, Uniboy did have that, have that extra flash. So Eric's engage did not actually dissuade them 
from uh, continuing on to this one. We're going to take a look at who actually gets the Herald right here. It, it does look like OMG were the ones to get the Herald. And Eric, even though he has the Flash, he doesn't see the Death Ray over the wall. It still falls down. New has to burn his Flash in turn and still dies onto the top lane. So OMG just... I, I think contesting where they didn't need to. I feel like their composition actually comes online a bit later than LGD's. And with the summoner disadvantage, they could have waited this out and just tried to trade tempo with Tristana. I agree. I think that that would have been the play that they should have gone for. Tried to see if they can replicate what they did in game one, in game two. But now they're put on the back foot, trying to be able to get themselves a little bit of gold. Uniboy seems like their target since that is a vault to lane as you talked about, but they have Quay nearby, and that Chaos Storm's doing a lot of damage. They finally are able to pick up the kills of Quay, unfortunately not able to dissuade the dive and the kill from going over to OMG while top lane oh, new, getting a lot of damage over onto Cult. I love it when Meganars just go all in like that. Uh, they have a surprisingly high amount of sustain. You don't lose the extra HP when you transform back into Mininar, so it acts sort of like regen. And the ultimate cooldown is actually very, very low. So good trade coming in from new. Meanwhile, in the bottom side, I, I'm actually so flabbergasted by that play. The crowd control was so long and uh, Quay wasn't able to leave anyone uh, underneath the towers so with just a very clean kill. Exactly. Nice dive executed by OMG and getting a lane ahead. Trying to fall back onto the shrine since that was the one lane that was relatively even for them and not really having to worry too much. So now... With a kill in his pocket, already nearly having the Tear of the Goddess stacked up as well. I feel like Ooming is going to look for these flank plays like we normally see out of this player. Yep, um, and Ooming should be able to leave lane with the Realm Warp quite easily. We do see the Death Ray finally done for Uniboy. He's going to be able to, uh, to keep this lane rather steady, but I do expect LGD to try and pinpoint this rise on the map. They have to do that before they can really go aggressive on the bottom side. And now that they have seen the rise show up, they're going to go all in. Eric had to use cleanse to be able to get away from the solar flare at a chance. But he's still alive. Still having Aki nearby with Ooming 2. I wonder if there is going to be a contest at this dragon since it seems like LGD want to take the objective. Yep, they are going straight for this one. Um, the key thing here is how can no uh, New join this fight? And if you look at his Mega Narbar, this is actually really well played from LGD. He's just going into cooldown. There will be no Mega Nar in this team fight. And it will rely on OMG just running into this one. But the Drake actually resets. Yeah, it's a bit it did. disastrous. And the Chaos Storm was already used by Uniboy, too. So it might be the Spite Fight. No, it's going to go over to Quay, but the fight continues out of OMG. With the Onslaught of Shadows into the back line, it doesn't get the kill just yet. Quay's still alive. They've lost out on Rakan. Without Cold here to be able to dissuade, it seems that LGD are going to continue to chase with the Flash coming in, but it's followed up by the Killer Instinct of Kramer, taking two kills for themselves. A lot of damage on Eric underneath the turret. LGD not done just yet. They might just go for the full commit dive with all five members here. Eric trying to be able to keep up at bay, saying, please don't. I'm not the, the one you want to be able to kill here. I don't want to die today. Laser Pointer comes in, and there it is, being able to pick up the kill. On to Eric underneath the dirt. New about to go mega, but he's got a lot of damage on top of his head. Same with Aki. Scaring away LGD, but that is three total kills into their pocket. Really well done by Quay. He lost the Herald Smite earlier, but this one he got in his pocket. So that's going to be a two Drake stack over to LGD with that Dragon Soul coming up in 20 minutes. That's ex that's massive. Very, very early Dragon Soul coming up from LGD in a composition that wants to close out the game earlier than their opponents. Plus, they got the kill over Ooming, so you take out that rise that you were kind of getting a little bit worried about in the mid-team mid fight game. Now you are in a better position. Look at the items that they've been able to now buy for themselves. They got that Eclipse finished for Cult. They've got the Landry's Anguish already for Uniboy. Next is going to be that Kraken Slayer for Kramer. It's a good time for LGD here in the mid game. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful uh, spike for Uniboy. Especially he's going to come back with the Power Siphon already evolved. So he's going to get a great shield in lane. And that just means that Umi loses all priority. There's no way you can trade against that victor when he's getting the shield on himself plus the death ray this early. It's uh, <laughs> it's actually very difficult to trade against victor evolves like this. And as we were talking about, victor is one of those champions that has very high priority in scrims and less so in competitive. Because in scrims, you get a lot more kills, get a lot more takedowns, get a lot more fragments. He seems like a much po more powerful champion. And right now, Uniboy is playing the scrim victor. <laughs> yes, he is. 
Gonna feel confident, as you said, already having two evolves already unlocked with the, both the laser pointer and the frisbee. I like to call them that just because it's always more fun. But still, it's just a great spike for them into these mid-game team fights that lets them shove in the wave a lot harder mid lane where Uming is not going to be able to keep up with Uniboy as much anymore so they can rotate for the Rift Herald. And there shouldn't even be a contest from OMG. Most of their lanes are shoved underneath turret while bot lane is the only one not since Kramer and Chance were trying to leave and do something elsewhere. Once again, I can't help but feel like LGD actually over-rotates a little bit. They had full prior in both their solo lanes, and their bottom lane didn't need to go at all. So, uh, yeah, they they definitely lose out on this one. There's no teleport from Ooming either, so if they just stayed in their position, they actually wouldn't... Uh, there was nothing OMG could actually trade back. But they, they go for the play, and now what they're on track to do is go for a double herald into the mid lane. They're probably not going to get the full tower, but hey, a shove is good enough, and they can take the top side as well. Having a tier one mid is always nice too, to be able to keep control of Aki a little bit more. So Quay feels a bit more free to roam around on the map. You're not really worrying about anything. Plus, Ooming not going to be rotating either. You don't have to worry about running. So two champs now, pretty much just sitting in the lane and you're always going to know where they are. Yeah, and I think the game strategy for LGD now is really simple. All you have to do is make sure you back before the Drake on time, spend all of the gold that you have just before the objective, come onto the come onto the rift and finish the game at 23 minutes. That's gonna be way earlier than OMG really wants to. Eric is not gonna be sitting anywhere close to three items. He's not gonna have that infinity edge spike. Um, the rise without a complete tier uh, right now is is not at a strong point either. So for LGD, it's it's actually rather easy to play around this. Like, they're not, they're not even playing against the three item spike from OMG. They're even denying the second item spike from coming out. So, LGD, all you have to do is keep vision. Don't go for any risky plays. Just make it all about Drakes and force OMG to find lucky steals. Oh, Kramer actually going for the Gale Force as opposed to the Kraken Slayer. I suppose there's not really a true tank on their side of, outside of Aki. But that's not really something you're worried about since you're trying to end the game so quickly anyways. So... They feel like they need to be able to get Kramer to self-peel a bit more. They've spent some of that gold, but OMG are at least not fully relenting around the objective. They don't want to give up soul points. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised by this. I, I feel like they don't really have the uh, power to hold the position that they currently are trying to hold. Uh, there's no Mega Nar on, uh, <laughs> on New, and LGD just called their bluff. They say, yeah, there's no way you actually hold this position, and they just walk in on them. <laughs> oh, it's what's OMG gonna do? They're actually gonna fight them with this kind of <laughs> deficit? No pick either? They're even like, nah, we're not doing that. There's no way. Even look, they're getting poked out in their own jungle because they can't step up against LGD. Yeah, I... Honestly, the way OMG should be trying to play this is you're you're actually just playing for steel, nothing else. Like <laughs> you're just trying to get Hecarim to go in, maybe snipe it off if he dies, whatever, and then you just try to play the side lane. So OMG oh. are over indexing it's into this 50. really really hard, and it and could they cost. Steal onslaught of shadows. Oh, Smite it. steel does come in, and they get the kill on Udir as well. But now they have to escape. Look at the damage into the back line. They're so low. It's gonna be the Gale Force getting a lot of damage on the cold with a oh, huge no. dart to the wall in the back line by New, trying to get out with. The Realm Warp. Oh, New doesn't get the party train. He's left out to dry, but the rest of OMG, they got away with a robbery. <laughs> that was so fun to see. OMG can't believe it themselves. Look at the emote from Aki. He's like, what? I got the steal. I also got the kill. What happened here? That was insane from OMG to be able to pull that off. I like how they have the right ideas. It was Drake steal. Pretend that you're going for the engage and everybody just get out. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was nuts to watch. Well, they lose the turret bot lane too, so it's not like they come out with the best out of it. Still, the steal from Aki, and then later the Realm War blows my mind. <laughs> the devastating charge even gets Udyr to walk back into Triss' damage. Like, Aki can't believe it himself, and the escape plan is there. They have a great getaway driver in Umi. Unfortunately for Aww. New though, oh, that's just painful to see. He isn't able to get to the Choppa, but OMG get what they look for. <laughs>
Hey, you know what? It works out for OMG. They've delayed the game a bit, and the longer they can keep this game going, the better for them. They need to be able to get these items built up onto their proper carries. They need to keep themselves just a little bit for, you know, not too far behind. You fall too far behind, then LGD are gonna do exactly what this composition is meant to. Consistently harass you, siege you to death where you're not getting any gold. Now that Eric is sitting on that zeal, trying to get towards that second item, this is pretty good for OMG. Yeah, it, it buys them five more minutes on the map, and, and that just means that if they can find a pick or funnel gold into Eric, as we see him getting all of the mid, mid lane farm right now, it should means that they could be very, very close to actually hitting the infinity edge on time before the uh, Dragon Soul fight really appears. So absolutely massive pick right there. I love their idea, the exact right play that they need for. And now LGD are the ones that might want to uh, pick up the tempo just a little bit. As we have talked about, this is a much more skirmishing composition. It's not really a great 5v5 comp against someone like the Gnar and Cold's crowd control that's going to be coming in for the late game. So uh, I think LGD are the ones now that will try to go for Baron plays. And if you look at their build, they actually have a pretty decent Baron. This is actually a fairly fast Baron with the Leandri's Anguish and the, uh, and the Jace. So L LGD, if they push out their soul lanes enough, they could just turn and race a Baron down. And we need to see that conviction coming in from LGD. Especially for a team that's trying to have their miracle run to be able to keep themselves with a the playoff hope alive. They aren't able to make clear-cut decisions like this. It won't look very good when they play against some of the top teams later on in their schedule that still are left at JDG, RNG, IG, that they still have to face off after OMG if they even beat them. How crazy would it be if LGD actually made it to playoffs? I, I actually want to see it happen. LGD against IG has actually happened in playoffs. We have seen that in 2020 where they weren't expected to win and they eliminated IG from going to Worlds. <laughs> so hey, you know? that's what Rookie died for. So it's not completely impossible, but OMG well, are going in. They gotta be able to get the picks here. They can't die like that. OMG beautifully done to find Cole. Great play, all inning on it, and that just means LGD can't even start the Herald play. Like we were saying, in the late game, this is all OMG needs to do. Their engage is much stronger, there's no response coming out from LGD, they don't have the damage to really kill Cold before he goes back, you don't want to waste your combo on the support anyway. So, OMG, whenever they see the 5 man and LGD just walk out like that, they will go all in. It's going to be up to LGD to try and get vision advantage on that side of the Baron, and to avoid um, OMG just walking them down like that. Right now, it's actually pretty difficult for LGD to play in this mid lane. It is, they're not feeling too confident with themselves to be able to push that lead that they still have. Even with that pick on the Colts, it's not like they've lost that lead suddenly. Still about 3,500 gold over OMG. Kramer and Chance trying to see if they can find a pick, continue to control the jungle of Aki so they can make a play around this dragon that's going to spawn here soon. This is a right call from LGD, but if OMG are able to just run them down once more around this objective since Colt's all the way topside with that TP still in his pocket, it might be too long before he's able to join in. I really like this play from New. He's holding on to his Mega Narbar. He's not letting, uh, he's not hitting the wave himself because he doesn't actually want to transform. So he's gonna go in and just uh, get a little bit of damage on. This is gonna keep his Narbar ticking up. And it also means that he can find a good flank in this situation. LGD is actually risking a lot here by going for this break. Right. They don't uh, have the pick. one again. And they get it though. <laughs> They do, and Solar Flare gets the pick on Ooming as well. Oh, Flash comes in from Clay, but man. huge knockout by Cold in the back line. That might rip apart LGD. You got the objective, but at what cost? Buster Shot knocks him back to trade the junglers, but now it's going to be Eric taken down. Double kill by Kramer. The rest of them trying to see if they can run away, but Ooming, he's tagged and he's down. Quay finds him, and you know what they're pinging. It's fair in time. Oh, oh they also oh, get the snipe off kill. <laughs> That was insane. I didn't see that one coming through, but that was very well done. Um, uh, troubling enough, that kill actually went over to Quay. We don't really know why, but OMG, I, I, that was a, definitely a winnable fight. Unfortunately for OMG, I, I'm not sure what Eric went. He actually went over the wall by himself, gets instantly picked off, and it, it just wasn't worth it. If, if they could have killed the front line from LGD that went over the ramp, I think that would have been enough. That, that would have been enough of a lead to sell this game out. 
Instead, Eric loses his mind, jumps straight in, and LGD says thank you very much, and they accelerate the game. We're, we're I want to see again. what happens with Eric here. I want to see yeah, exactly like, what This is a good does. position from OMG. They cut off the back line. All you have to do is focus on Quay. That's all. And you, you get this good fight, okay? That is fine. Um, but look at Eric in this position right here. He doesn't get a takedown. No resets coming through. And they just get their front line completely collapsed upon. And that was <laughs> blind. It was a blind snipe. He just threw up a shock blast saying, ah, I don't know, he might be there. <laughs> Uh, Uniboy? Oh, Uniboy Hello? has chance nearby, and the TPs are coming in to try to see if they can actually get the pick. No, but Eric, Eric is taken out, so it's a one for one trade, and Cold can't run away from Colt, it seems. Even with an onslaught of shadows by Aki, they are stuck in this fight. Ooming trying his best, but they want to be able to give a kill over to Colt while they do the chase down on the other side from Quay, being able to scare away the pony. So again, LGD win the fight. Oh, that is so painful. Umi thought that, uh, I'm sorry, Eric thought that he would be able to get the reset, but there was a Zanias on Uniboy. He stalls out long enough. He trades the kill back, and that was a three for one with the Baron buff. The base is going to get cracked down. This is at least a strong uh, top lane tower push coming in with a good setup following. Yeah, it should at least be that. Still a minute and a half left on this Baron buff for LGD. Getting more gold into their pockets, even making sure that Kramer can get that red buff topside. So they are in the perfect position. They've now finally been able to escalate that lead that we were talking about. That was stalled out well by OMG, but not being able to keep it stalled. And LGD have finally found the cracks in the armor for OMG to be able to press their lead into their base. Uh, this is kind of an interesting game that we're seeing kind of the weaknesses of both teams. I, I feel like OMG actually don't really know how to solve out games. This is not their typical way to play. Like, they actually like to play super aggressive with Ooming in the early and mid phases of the game. And I just found their Herald and Dragon contest it, were a little bit weird. I, I feel like the first Herald and the second Drake contest were very unnecessary for OMG. Um, and that's actually where they gave over most of their lead. So we are seeing kind of the matchup uh, uh, sort of shift between these two teams where um, both of them are kind of handshaking on the early game, giving over the early game compositions to each other, and uh, just just trying to find a better balance between how they want to play the mid game. But he takes no damage from Ooming, by the way. He just it was, it was the Everfrost into a full on combo out of Rise and pretty much walked it off as though nothing had really happened. So. With Baron now timing out for LGD, this dude oh. gives a little bit of time for OMG. Eric, you can't step up like that, unfortunately. Not with the Collector in the pocket of Kramer. This actually might be enough to be able to give them the opportunity to crack that final outer turret that remains for OMG. Does look like a no opposition coming in from OMG. I think they still need more time to scale up. Really, you want Rise with that Seraph's uh completed already that's when he his damage spikes very very heavily he gets the extra mana plus he also scales with mana anyway so uh, he gets to double dip on that item uh, but he has been forced into a barrier early on just for the laning phase and how fed uniboy was so this is a team that omg I, I feel like what they want to do is they still want to stall out a little bit this is an ocean drake which i, I actually don't think matters that much if LGD gets, I would much rather go into this with my third item spike than rather contest full on and lose here. So uh, my guess for OMG is that they're actually, they're, they're revving up the escape car. This is the exact same play you've seen before. They're getting that chopper spinning and Aki, all you have to do is just get another steal. That's all we're asking. <laughs> yeah, but look at the damage onto Cole, the poke, and this is the difficulty with LGD's comp that you're trying to run into. They can constantly siege down, so Aki has kept that bait oh. purely by Uniboy and Chance. They can't get anywhere near, and with the slow on Ooming, has to flash away from the Zenith Blade to be able to survive, but OMG at least are attempting to be able to get into the back lane. They've already lost Cole, unfortunately, so Aki trying to run away. Nar ult not gonna come in just yet from New. Finally gonna be able to get it, but he dies in the meantime. Two are picked on their side, trying <laughs> yeah, to be able no. to make it out. This time, though, they're empty. Their pockets have nothing left as LGD are able to get the minions to march down into the base. Honestly, that play made zero sense for Maki. I, I don't know what the communication was, but Aki doesn't go in for this deal. 
he decides to go in when his top laner doesn't want to go in, and they pretty much just throw the game off of that. <laughs> I'm really surprised right, about that one. Here? OMG don't get the third item spike that they were looking for, and now LGD are looking to close this one off and go to a game oh. three. Booming just gets picked underneath the Nexus Hurts, even though members are respawning. It might be too late. No Nexus Hurts left. This is LGD wanting to be able to get to game three. They know that the composition was going to fall off sooner or later, so they decided to be able to get that lead for themselves here at 30 minutes into the game. There it is. We are going to game three. Definitely a winnable game from OMG, but we just didn't see them hit their power spikes. They got no. that one steal before.